The exhibition celebrates the sustained power of drawing in our digital age. It explores the resilience of drawing as a means of responding to contemporary questions of representation and dialogue. Across our two institutions in Oxford and London, we've assembled a group of 14 international contemporary artists, all of whom explore what drawing can offer their practice at this moment of hyper accessibility and productivity of images in our digital age. What we have here is a display of considerable craft and skill and dexterity. So these artists have learnt very particular drawing procedures. Um, they're employing hyperrealism in the case of David Haynes, Trompe Loy in the case of uh, David Musgrave. And what this exhibition is trying to suggest is that these artists have very conceptual approaches to their, their work um, and those approaches incorporate some of these, uh, what might be called traditional skills of drawing. Uh, we feel that it kind of really shows a big kind of change in how drawing is looked at. This work revolves around a meditation on, on drawing um, in, in this digital age. Um, I, I was looking at using this moiré pattern, which of course has been used um, art historically by artists from Liechtenstein to, through to Polka. Um, but kind of giving that a new reference, a reference to, to the digital, to, to the ones and zeros, to the black and whites, to the on and off of the digital image and uh, reproducing that um, painstakingly um, in the form of this large drawing. So really the whole concept behind the drawing is a kind of meditation on what it is to make an image with, with your hands in, in this oversaturated digital world. drawings of um, sheets of paper which are almost exactly continuous with the paper that they're drawn on and what I try to do with these drawings is open up this very very narrow space between uh, what's there the kind of literal makeup of the drawing the graphite and the paper and some illusionistic sort of imaginary space which is the pictorial space of the drawings um, and for me, all kinds of things can fall into that. All sorts of experiences and ideas um, sort of happen. They sort of vibrate in this very tight sort of gap between what's literally there and what you project into um, a drawing by looking at it. Atlas comprises a hundred open atlases uh, which are laid on trestle tables. Um, the atlas is the AA motoring atlas of Europe and each atlas is open on a different page. So it comprises the whole landscape of Europe from north to south. Um, and you can walk in between the tables and imagine the landscape. I've drawn on all of the atlases with black pen and the drawing, in fact, deletes all the information except for the white dots, which are the places. So what you see on the open pages is almost like a constellation of habitation. a cheap publication of Medigliani drawings. It's from the Master Draftsman series and I uh, made the drawings by um, lying 
on a page um, and mapping around as much of my body as I could at a time. So, um, so I might have placed my hand and my arm on the page and gone around that and then moved along my body until I had mapped um, around the edge of the whole of my body. And the end point was when I had gone around the whole of my body. But for me, the ones which felt like something was happening with them in an exciting way were the ones where um, there was a breakdown between the reproduction of Medigliani's drawing and my own drawing, and you couldn't quite discern where the body he'd been representing it began and ended and my own and I was also interested in the sense that um, the representation of my own body became a tangled mess, a sort of a scribble which harks back to the title Disgrace, this idea of it, it, it not being proper to draw in a book or to write over somebody else's words or somebody else's representation and the sense of trying to enter into a kind of a, a genuinely questioning dialogue with those works and think about how the female body is represented and how those um, earlier representations of the body have influenced our understanding of the female body and how it is represented in art. I, I should say, like, everything has some relationship to water, right? So I thought if I was going to be making a show about water, and a number of these drawings are more 21st century ideas about water, um, like, like this one is a kind of image you would see in a magazine or an advertisement of just like abundance and um, the fruits of the earth, wine, cheese, grapes. Of course, this requires a lot of water to grow these things. So if these are 21st century ideas, I thought it was important to think about the history of water in relationship to imperialism and colonialism and uh, you know, nautical power that a masted ship invokes. So I thought somewhere in the drawing, I, somewhere in the show, there needs to be some sort of like, you know, 18th, 19th century kind of masted ship. So this one is two pieces of 22 by 30 paper because I wanted to make a this size um, and I could have used the roll paper, which was 45 inches, and that would have got me close to this size drawing, but then I couldn't have folded it up and sent it to my father. So he shot through it, and you can actually, I don't know, you can't really see the green too well, but you, the, the back of the drawing is plexi, so you can like see right through the drawing if we, if we had it lit a little bit differently. to explore the black voice and look at the acknowledgement and the representation of black soldiers that has contributed and or represented in the British Armed Force from a hundred years um, to the contemporary. In terms of representing in a political way, I guess, the tearing, the ripping, I've cut, I've torn, I remove, I've washed, and that represent the erasure, the taking away, the invisibility. Here, I'm working with the embossed to look at, to represent another device in terms of representing the erasure again, but this time, instead of the black figures are removed, the images are now replaced, whereby the white counterparts, they are in the distance. They are the ones that are being removed. It's, it's quite violent, I think, but at the same time, the way I present it is quite poetic. It's subtle. It's meant to entice. It's meant to trigger a conversation. for the exhibition and its project was a much earlier exhibition of international drawing held at Modern Art Oxford in 1972. It assembled 40 artists from across the world to explore the notion of drawing not as pseudo painting but rather as a means to an end and a work and a medium in its own right. 
So over 45 years later, A Slice Through the World updates and challenges some of the questions and ideas that were explored in that original drawing show in the Oxford Institution. And what we want to do is take a similarly international perspective on the continuity of the medium of drawing in our digital age to look at a return to skill and a return to representational imagery when we have a prevalence and an overabundance of very quickly produced and easily shared digital images. As David said um, on Tuesday at Drawing Room in London, with any digital image, eventually you will get to a pixel. You can never get beyond that basic building block of how digital images are constructed. Whereas there's a richness and an irreducibility to the graphic line which can never be broken down to a smaller component.